Axel Merck is the president and chief investment officer at Merck Investments, and he joins us now from Mountain View, California, to give us his perspective. Axel, welcome back to Bottom Line. Always a pleasure to have you on. It's good to be with you. Axel, what steps do European officials have to take to prove to global markets that Europe can keep the sovereign debt crisis from spreading to Spain and Italy? What institutional processes are needed at this point? Well, we need institutional processes. Maybe that's, that's where we have to start rather than these ad hoc solutions. It doesn't really matter, I think, how we proceed, but what the market needs is clarity on how we proceed. And of course, Papandreou, from his perspective, yes, he's saying this is a make it or break it mo um, mode. Merkel, the German Chancellor, has been trying to play down expectations. And, and part of the issue is really from the German Chancellor, we haven't seen the sort of leadership coming from there. The German opposition, by the way, is calling for a Marshall Plan, debt forgiveness, and all kinds of things. Um, what we need is we need clarity on how this is sustainable. Italy having a primary surplus means that Italy is in a very different situation. Now, if the markets deteriorate further, Europe mm -hmm. will be forced to give some sort of blanket guarantee. That, of course, would be way forward, but the yeah. leaders are very reluctant to give that. Axel, how do officials get bondholders and banks to foot a share of the bill without a new wave of financial turmoil? Well, they have been footing a share of the bill. I mean, bond prices are down 50% for the Greek bonds or more. And, and so from that point of view, there's plenty. So if, if for example, the, um, the Europeans were to buy the Greek bonds, um, there is private sector participation because most folks would be selling at a loss if mm -hmm. they were to be sold. Um, at the same time, the cost of the what the, what the so-called private sector participation is far greater than the benefit. The idea came up a year ago. At the time, the holdings were very concentrated, and there was that seemed like a good idea. Now. Many of the banks have been selling off their holdings, and yeah. so the participation rate is going to be very, very low. So it's an idea that's on the table, but it's not a very effective one, causing more trouble than, than it's worth for and the And Axel, being. you mentioned the bonds earlier today. The yield on two-year Greek notes rose above 40 percent for the first time. And since the end of June, Spanish and Italian 10-year bond yields have climbed more than 70 basis points. Investors, they're also demanding extra yield to hold 10-year Italian bonds over German bonds. What happens if the spreads in Italy and Spain go up? Well, let's keep in mind, Italy's average maturity on its debt is about seven years, a little over seven years. So Italy has room. Spain's total debt-to-GDP ratio is quite low. Having said that, of course, these spreads are concerning. What we have argued, though, for a long time is that the issues in the Eurozone, while very serious, they should be reflected in the spreads in the bond market. Mm -hmm. We think it's perfectly compatible for the Euro to be very strong despite those peripheral problems. And we've seen the Euro climb from 118 to the low 140s at the same time these spreads blowing up. So right. it's it's really up to each one of these countries to take care of the issues. Greece, of course, at some point will have to restructure. Um, what yeah. Italy needs is, is, is more fundamental reform. But we can have a stronger euro in the backdrop of all of this. Uh, Axel, you prefer the risk of holding a German T-bill over a U.S. money market fund. Why? Well, um, cash is no longer safe anywhere in the world. And uh, if you hold cash in the U.S., odds are a portion of that is in, in taxable non-government money market funds. Now, those funds, about half of the exposure typically is to European banks through commercial paper issued in U.S. dollar. And right. in return, if you were to hold a German T-bill, well, you have counterparty risk to the German government. Personally, I prefer that risk versus holding that um, in the U.S. And mm -hmm. we've seen the, the Treasury bills um, in the U.S. dip to negative territory on occasion in recent weeks. Um, precisely because institutional managers don't think it's worth the risk of holding the money market funds. Now, the good news may be that these funds are too big to fail, um, yeah. and as such, the risk may, may only be nominal. But still, um, yes, given the choice, I'd rather ho hold the German T-bill. When we hold mm -hmm. the euro, we hold Northern European debt. We would not advise anybody um, holding um, the, the Southern European debt unless they're very risk-friendly investors. Axel, how's the situation in Europe affecting institutional investors here in the United States? Well, institutional investors, it depends, of course, on what the mandate is. As, as I pointed out, the, as far as the money market funds, institutional money market funds have had some outflows because of that. Now, as far as the overall global investment allocation is concerned, in, investors, institutional and individuals, should be embracing that there is no such thing anymore as a safe asset right. and consider the currency risk even of the equ equity portfolio in the U.S. There is currency risk on any investment, and we have been advocating a diversified approach, actively managing that currency risk. And in Indeed, as far as the euro is concerned, while very controversial, um, right. everybody hates the euro. We think there is value. We think that if and when there is clarity, and some of that will come in, in, that, um, in the meeting, not enough, unfortunately, we are afraid, yeah. but some of that, and that will, um, over the medium term, help the euro. Axel, I have about 15 seconds. Is now the time for investors to begin managing the currency risk of their entire portfolio, not just the portion containing U.S. equities? 
Definitely. For the, for the S&P, for the bond, for a fixed income portfolio, domestic fixed income one, you cannot take a passive approach to that anymore. You should embrace that very actively. Axel Merck, President and Chief Investment Officer, Merck Investments, joining us from Mountain View, California. Axel, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for your time today.